Hi, today we are going to talk about passive voice and why it makes our writing weaker than when we use active voice. Most of the time we use active voice, it's what we naturally gravitate to, but sometimes we can slip into this passive subject verb thing um, and that's what we want to avoid. I know I have struggled with it, I still struggle with it, I have gotten better and you know, my drafts have less passive voice, but I still slip into that when I'm writing quickly and I'm just trying to get words on the page. So looking for this thing is something that we usually do when we go back to revise and clean up our manuscripts. Okay, so first of all, active voice, what we want is when the subject of a verb is doing the action. So the subject in a sentence is performing the action stated by the verb, okay? It's very clear for the reader and easy for them to understand. When we slip into passive voice, the subject is no longer the doer. In fact, they are being acted upon by the verb. And this makes for kind of murky, weak writing, and we can be a lot more straightforward. And a lot of times these are very easy fixes. So over time, like I said, I have become better at writing an active voice and as you practice looking for these things you will get better at it as well. Um, let's look at a couple of examples. So first off a tip for what you can look for with passive writing are the words is, was, and were. If those are part of your verb it's possible that you are writing in passive voice. Remember we did talk about linking verbs so sometimes those words are necessary and the goal isn't to go through your manuscript and cut out all instances of those words. Words. I cannot talk today, sorry. <laughs> so what we want to do when you're looking at your sentences and you find one of those verbs, ask yourself, is the subject doing the action or is the action being done to the subject? And if the answer is the second one, then See if you can reword it so that the subject is now doing the action. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples. And these examples I am taking from, it looks like yourdictionary.com. Um, and they're kind of, some of them are kind of funny. Okay, first one. The flat tire was changed by Sue. Okay, well, we know what's going on. There's a flat tire and Sue changed it. Ah, see what I did there? I automatically changed it from passive to active by saying Sue changed the flat tire. It's very clear who is doing the action and what that action is. Okay, the obstacle course was run by me in record time. That just feels wordy and kind of cumbersome. It's very easy to flip that around and say I ran the obstacle course in record time. It's a lot clearer, it's more concise, and it just feels better when you read it. Okay, let's do one more. The novel was read by mom in one day. Mom read the novel in one day. So see, these are very easy changes, very easy things that you can do to make sure that you are being clearer for your reader, that you're being more concise, and that you are not slipping into kind of that wishy-washy, weak verb usage. Okay, there are some times when you may want to use passive voice on purpose, and I'm just going to touch on these really quickly for a moment. I don't think that I consciously think about this a lot, and maybe it's something I need to think about. So here are four instances where you may want to use the passive voice in order to emphasize something other than that subject. Okay. So you can use it when you don't know who the person performing the action is, or when it's obvious to the reader or listener who is performing that action. I don't, I don't actually like that one, but that was a suggestion. Uh, you may use passive voice when it's not important to know who the person doing the action is. Maybe what's more important is what was being done. Um, I still don't know that I agree with that either. <laughs> I personally feel like you need to be very clear about all those things, but um, maybe there are instances where it's more important to see what happened or what is being done than who is doing it. Um, and the last one was you may use 
passive voice when people in general are the agent. So maybe it's a crowd of people that are doing something and you don't need to be specific about who it is, then maybe it's fine to use passive voice. Um, of course, the less you use passive voice, the stronger your writing's gonna be. And so that's something I wanna challenge you to do. Go back to one of your recent writing pieces and look for instances where you slipped into passive voice and ask yourself, what is the most important thing for the reader to know? Is it who is doing the action or is it what the action is? And is there an easy way that I can flip this around and make it more active? 